Shasha here with me and so last night she really urged us uh, to get outside and to really begin to take in this energy uh, and on today we learned that the portal closed uh, on today and is usually closed on today uh, via information that we received shout out to wise royalty uh, who dropped that bit of information um, today uh, so that don't worry I truly believe that the portal is going to open its doors back up uh, but for those of you, I think that this definitely presents an opportunity uh, for us to tap in uh, into the things that we really need to release uh, as we enter into this last Lion's Gate portal uh, that we will see uh, not again shush out until 50 years, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, and so this portal is important. Uh, and there is definitely a birthing that's happening uh, for those of you who are familiar with our topic for today's Tuesday. See, I didn't introduce myself. Hello to everybody who is into the sanctuary. 
And hello to everybody who is returning. My name is Rue Monera Holland Bay, and I am one half of the sanctuary here over at Holland Spices. As many of you know, my other half is Akila Asad Holland, also known as Mrs. Holland, as I affectionately love to call her. Uh, she is around. Uh, floating and taking care of the, of the house she made us a delicious dinner uh, for tonight and we are so excited to tap in uh, but hello to everybody and to all the new faces that I'm seeing pop into this live uh, on tonight I'm so happy that you that you're here and again welcome to this week's episode uh, of our art of ritual uh, during Sundays and happening every Sunday uh, we are using this opportunity here at the sanctuary uh, to really begin to delve into ritual and the importance of incorporating ritual into our everyday lives. Uh, and Spirit really began to deal with us here at the sanctuary uh, with ritual and how we find ourselves operating in ritual just from waking up and the rising and deciding what type of day you're going to have to brushing your teeth to washing your body and the thoughts uh the divine thoughts hopefully that you are downloading and programming yourself with uh to dropping your children off at school every day in the routine feeding them breakfast what are you imparting into your children uh, before they leave the house or into your spouse before they leave the house or before you make off and get started in your day, what rituals and what ways are you covering and protecting yourself uh, and really calling back your power before you begin your day or before you get started in anything. Uh, on Sundays here at the Sanctuary, we're using uh, our Art of Rituals uh, as a way to help you guys uh, to develop practical spiritual maintenance routines uh, that I personally feel that we all should really begin incorporating uh, into our everyday lives, especially as we watch the world around us uh, shift and transform and change and go through its own um, sort of tower moment and tower experience as me and my uh, sister Shasha uh, we're really talking about last night and so much came up uh, during the beginning of this full moon, this new moon and welcoming in this energy and there were so many downloads uh, that came forward last night and some of them I'm going to hopefully share with you guys and then a lot of them we're keeping them so to ourselves because Spirit really uh, shared with us some beautiful, beautiful gems uh, and Spirit was truly in the building last night and so I'm truly excited to have you guys here with me uh, for this week's episode of Art of Ritual titled what are you giving birth to or to what are you giving birth to to what are you birthing be it a physical birth be it a spiritual birth be it a mental birth you're birthing your ideas anytime you're thinking and holding intentions in your mind or creating visions of what you desire your life to most be uh, understand that you are in a process of birthing and of creating uh, in the same stages that you uh, would see pre pregnant women go, go through when they reach full gestation. Uh, that same uh, process or principle happens uh, even when we are bringing our visions to life. And I, and I truly believe that Spirit is really charging us in this season uh, to become comfortable with proclaiming that we are the creators mm -hmm. of our life. And not only understanding uh, that we are the creators, but understanding who we are in our creation mm -hmm. and the importance of really taking this time as we watch the world shift mm -hmm. and change. This is not the first time that you guys have heard me say uh, that we're watching the world die, you know, and really rebirth herself. Mm -hmm. And the way spirit is really showing it to me, the baby or us, who we're becoming, who we're ascending to, really as we take on our missions and come back into the awareness of our bodies and of our minds, coming back into the awareness that we speak into the universe, we speak into the ethers, and we say, let there be light. You know, there's been so many things and so many tools that's been given to us. Uh, for many of them, they've been disillusions. Uh, and for others, there's been truths 
hidden in them. It, but we will open our eyes and change our perspectives uh, and how the programming that we receive. Uh, it will really behoove us in this season uh, to fall away from everything that we think we know and everything uh, that we think we need in order to achieve uh, who we see ourselves most being or who we see the ascended part of us being. There is nothing in this material world uh, that is going to give you your ascension. There is nothing that is on the outside of you uh, that is going to initiate you into who you're becoming. There is nobody on the outside of you that can even make the decision to tap back into your consciousness or to become aware or to see your Christ consciousness as not being, as no longer being something cliche that we talk about, but that we really begin to put these principles into practice and not practice in outwardly conduct, but into practice within ourselves, within our minds, really going through a rebaptizing. And that's one of the reasons why I'm in my bathroom, as you guys can see, uh, and I'm in the water. Uh, because I truly believe that um, water is the conduit right now uh, for really helping us to shapeshift our being, to shapeshift everything that we think is happening around us, shifting our minds and how we think, doing away with evil. And you guys, any of you guys who joined me on last week, we really delved into the etymology of evil and what that meant. And when we looked at the etymology of evil, it simply broke down into any thought that goes contrary to God, to the God substance. And when we look at the etymology of God, it breaks down into divine goodness, divine thoughts, divine creation. It's not a man in the sky <laughs> that we're waiting to ascend down on the clouds and to save us from all of the worldly matters. It's us recognizing that we are God made manifest, or what some will call Jesus Christ. We are Christ's consciousness, or the divine goodness of the universe made manifest, operating in our own individuality, meaning you didn't come down here to be the same as everybody else, as we're under this Leo energy. The Spirit is really giving us the confidence the confidence that we need in order to really believe in ourselves, in order to even begin to see ourselves as the creator, okay? And so tonight's Art of Ritual is titled, To What Are You Birthing? Okay, welcome to our Art of Ritual, everybody. We're gonna jump right in. Let me have some water first, because my mouth is dry, okay? And as I see, I got some wine behind me. <laughs> I shade to the spirits. <laughs> To my water, I am having um, chlorophyll that I've been like stealing from my sister, Shasha. <laughs> but I've been drinking it in my water as of late uh, since she's been here, and I've really noticed the difference. Um, and so that's what I'm sipping on. I have some wine behind me. Um, and we're going to jump right in, guys. And I'm going to really try not to make this super long. Uh, but before I get in, because I was called um, to do a little sound healing. I also have my water here, so I'm going to add it to my bowl. Um, and I'm going to charge one charge of this water, and I'm going to wash my hands before we proceed to go forward. Um, and I'm just going to clear clear my channels before we move forward into this exercise. And some of it I'm going to add to my bath water. Okay, so if you guys have had a very long day, uh, if your new moon today or this portal coming into this portal coming into this new moon has been very taxing or has been very draining, especially emotionally, um, or you found yourself in tower moments as we've come into this energy, especially as we get gotten into today, I want you to settle your energy to take a few moments to take a few deep breaths in. And as you exhale, I want you guys to release the frustration, to release the doubt, to release the fears, to release the stagnation that you're feeling. Uh, one of the things or gems that Spirit told us last night uh, that we're not blocked, 
that you're not stagnated, that you're not stuck, okay, but that the universe has us in a spiritual holding place. And we thought that that was so beautiful because for many of us, as we experience things shift and change around us, our immediate thought um, goes to what am I doing wrong? What am I not doing right? I thought that I was putting all the pieces into place. I thought that I was really waking up every day and being very intentional about my time and being very intentional about who I spend my energy with, okay, and who I allow to spend energy with me. You know, Spirit is really coming to tell us now uh, that your endurance and that your, pers your perseverance is going to be rewarded. And that you're not stuck and that you're not blocked in the season, but that you're in a spiritual holding space. And in one of our lives here before, we talked about how uh, movement doesn't necessarily mean nothing's happening. A lot of times when we're doing so much work, there are moments where we need to find stillness and where we need to find rest. You know, when plants are growing and trees are growing, they're not always in motion. They're not always doing something. There are a lot of points in the growth of a plant where it takes moments to rest and to rejuvenate, okay? And to recoup and to replenish all of the energy that has been giving out and all of the work that has been, do that has been doing, you know? And if any of you guys have ever taken the time to plant, you know that sometimes in the process, especially when you start from a seed, sometimes the process of am I doing this gardening thing right? Am I adding enough water? Am I allowing it to get enough sun? Because you don't see movement. And sometimes you won't see movements for weeks depending upon which plant or what seeds you're planting. Sometimes you won't see growth uh, for months depending upon what seeds you're planting. You know, and even when we birth those of us who have given birth and who have had children, uh, many of the times in the beginning stages of pregnancy, many of us don't even aren't are unaware that there's anything even happening within our bodies. You know, until symptoms begin to take place. But does it mean that it wasn't always happening? No, it was always happening. But your bodies, our bodies are catching up to that experience. Okay? And so let's go ahead and take a moment to center yourself, uh, quiet your space. If you're around a lot of people, take a moment to just step away uh, and to just center yourself, okay? Uh, take this moment to call in your own spirit guides, call in your own ancestors, uh, call in your guides and ask them to be with you. Even as the portal is closed around us, we are in a spiritual waiting space. So we're waiting for the opportunity for spirit to open up before us, even though the heavens are already open. Okay? So prepare yourself to take in this energy once the portals open back up to you. Okay? us and that you give us what you desire us to most hear on tonight. 
I ask that you allow the beings that are listening right now with me in tune in spirit. I allow, I ask that you allow us to sing, that you allow us to meet with open minds, that you allow us to meet in the heart space, that you allow us to have and to share divine thoughts. I give thanks to the energy of this new moon in Leo. I give thanks to the confidence that's being bestowed upon us. I give thanks for the birthing that is coming forth through us and out of us. I give thanks. And I ask that spirit speaks and that you speak with clarity and in truth. And so guys, some of the tools that I that I told you guys uh, to have for tonight's ritual is our metaphysical dream wash. And I'm going to add some of this to the water that I'm using. And I'm also going to pour some in my bath. And so even if you aren't partaking in this ritual on tonight, that's fine. Uh, we're in this Lion Gates portal for a while. Um, and so even if you don't get to it today, make note to get to it, to get to some level of water, to some form of water, uh, because the water is really transmuting us in this, as we go through this change. Water is really transforming us as we go through this shift, okay? And so to, to my water, I'm also going to be adding my evil eyes, um, spirit water, um, all of these things, guys, if you are looking for them, are available uh, on hollandspices.com. They're all available on hollandspices.com. To my water, I'm also going to be adding uh, our Palo Santo holy water as well. One of our newest oils that really that just dropped um, on today. I'm super excited about this oil because it's really speaking uh, and can be super helpful for those of you who are really having a hard time transitioning uh, as, as our form changes and shifts around us. Uh, this oil is really vital and essential and was curated uh, with the intentions of covering you and providing for you in every area of drought, in every season of drought where you find yourself in. And so I'm going to go into uh, our Tree of Life water and our Tree of Life oil on another live, but I'm adding some of this to uh, my bath on tonight as well. And for those of you who are, who are familiar already with um, our Mama Moon, I'm pulling on this on my Mama Moon spiritual body oil as well, and I'm adding some of it to my bath. Uh, Mama Moon is phenomenal for transformations. Uh, I tell people all the time, if you're not ready for your light to shift uh, and for you to really come to reckoning with yourself and to reckoning with the things and the people around you, don't use Mama Moon. But when you're ready for change and true transformation and you're really ready to see yourself like you've never seen yourself before and to see the people um, around you like never before, Mama Moon is definitely a spiritual body oil that you guys uh, should work with. Um, and to my water, lastly, I'm going to be adding our Tree of Life um, Spirit Water. And it carries the same properties uh, of our Tree of Life Spiritual Body Oil. Um, our tree of life, spiritual body oil, and spirit water, I mean, and the yeah, spirit water is also phenomenal. Uh, if you deal with depression or if you find yourself in your own um, dark night of the soul experience, uh, it's a phenomenal tool to work with. Okay, everybody, let's jump in. 
we set our intentions, we, pro we programmed and we charged our water and now we're going to jump into the lesson. Uh, thank you to everybody who is joining us. Hello to everybody who is joining us. I'm so happy uh, that you guys found time to be with us uh, on this week's episode of Art of Ritual. Uh, this week's episode is titled to What Are You Birthing? What Are You Bringing Forth Out of Yourself? Be it uh, if you find yourself pregnant during this time and around this time, uh, to what are you instilling? What are you programming into the seed that you're bringing forth into your child? What divine thoughts are you teaching that child? What divine goodness are you pouring into the child? Are you allowing worry and frustration to infiltrate uh, as you're carrying life within you? Uh, do you find yourself aborting your ideas and, and aborting your visions? Uh, or have you found yourself in seasons of miscarriage, be it physical miscarriage in the body, miscarrying a physical child, uh, or maybe your dreams and your visions, maybe you've gotten started and really put in work uh, into bringing your dreams to life and maybe they miscarried as you were on your way to full gestation. Uh, we're going to be delving into birthing. Uh, to what are you giving birth? And when we look at the etymology of birth, uh, it breaks down into the emergence of a baby uh, or a young from the from young from the mother. So the birthing, the physical birthing of a child. Uh, it also breaks down into the start of life uh, as it physically separates from the body. Uh, and so there we see that you're carrying something within you. You're speaking, your intentions, your love that you created with your mate. Uh, all of those visions of starting a family and having a vision, they started in your mind. And from your mind, the womb of the mother carried that vision into full manifestation. Okay, and then we'll, there's another definition of birth, and it reads the beginning or the coming into existence of something. So you're birthing a dream, you're birthing a thought. Maybe some of you are birthing new emotions. Maybe some of you are birthing new perspectives, new principles that you desire to live by now moving forward as, as the things around you are shifting and changing. Um, and when we look at the metaphysical definition, uh, uh, birthing it reads the with the awakening of man to his consciousness to the consciousness of his unity that he shares with the universal spirit and I thought that that was so beautiful because it shows you that we are but children from this universe we are the seeds and the thoughts that this divine universe thought up and wanted to see itself expressed in the physical. And so we've been birthed from this great and divine universe and now we are those children, those seeds that are, that are now charged to creating grand lives, just like grand universes, just like the universe that we come from, okay? Um, it says, that the change from mortal to spiritual consciousness is also a form of birthing. So those of us who are just coming into our awakening, maybe some of you have been on this awakening journey for years, uh, and maybe you're just feeling like you're getting to the point where you could really push yourself into the things and into the places where you most desire to see yourself. And so for all of us, we are experiencing a rebirth. You know, especially as we come back and connect back to our consciousness. And when we look at the etymology of consciousness, it simply means to be aware. Are you aware of your body? Are you aware of the thoughts that you're thinking? Are you aware of the evil that you are allowing to infiltrate into your mind? Especially in uh, the times that we're in right now where we're seeing fear push so much and it's serving a purpose because they too are birthing their own universe. They too are building up how they most desire to see the world, right? And it's our job to tap back into our consciousness to become consciously aware of what's happening around us, why it's happening around us, and from which channels is it producing. 
so that you know how to cut it off at the root and to pick up your own ideas, to pick up your own visions that you desire to have and to create for yourself. Because if we don't have a vision and and, and if we aren't in a place of being actively in the, in the process of building up our own mind and connecting with our own divine universe that's within us, there's somebody body else out here that is waiting to give you a vision that's waiting to give you something to live for something to strive after you know and as we watch those things around us die because we're going to see a lot of the jobs and the things that we have depended on uh, for years fade away and for many of us is going to be fearful but the only reason why it's fearful is because you haven't taken the time to create your own world, to create your own desires, to create your own dreams. Are you taking time in your day to just spend time in the clouds being daydreaming in your thoughts? What are you conjuring up in your mind? What are you building in your womb? Okay, be it female or male, what are you building and growing in your wombs? Okay, uh, it says, this, the metaphysical de definition says that through the begetting and the quickening power of the word of truth, it brings forth birthing. So the truth we see now is being connected to birthing. So what do you believe to be most true about yourself? What do you believe to be most true about the world around you? And when you discover those things, that will help you really understand why the things around you are coming forth the way that they're coming forth. You know, from the roots to which they're coming forth, okay? We talked about consciousness. We know that consciousness is simply uh, the sense of awareness, the sense of knowing, okay? The knowledge of realization of any ideas, objects, and conditions. Are you aware of the things that are taking place around you? Are you aware of every moving part? Are you aware of the conditions that may exist in your mind? that may exist in your spirit body? Are you aware of the conditions that may exist in your physical body? What messages, what things are coming towards the surface uh, right now for you that you can really begin to assess and see whether it's working for you or whether it is um, miscarrying your dreams or if it's putting you in the position to continue to abort your visions to abort your dreams, to abort your desires, to abort your wants, therefore taking on that of someone else's, okay? Uh, we're going to move on because we, we've talked a lot about consciousness, uh, but it's very important for us in this season to really begin to understand our consciousness and to tap into our consciousness. Uh, and how we do that is by giving ourselves and programming ourselves with divine ideas. Okay, and when we look at divine ideas and we study what that is, divine ideas must be incorporated into our consciousness before they can mean anything to us. So you must believe a thing to be true before it can physically even mean anything, before it can hold any type of resonance in your spirit, right? Before you can feel your way through your ideas and to your dreams. And for many of us, we become overwhelmed just in the process of thinking on idea, I, I divine ideas. Just thinking on the things that we want to bring into fruition. Just thinking on the goals that we want to accomplish. Many of us tap out just at the stage of thinking, at the stage of thought, because we've become overwhelmed already by the work that must be done, but the work physically, but you can't even get to the physical work until you take care of the work and the mind. Doing away, resharpening, reprogramming your mind to give your eye, I, I sweetly, I do everything in sweetness. I speak sweetly. My actions are sweet. The people who come to me, they receive me sweetly. My tongue is sweet as honey. I am aware of everything that is happening around me. I am divinely good. I have clean thoughts. I have amazing thoughts. I am capable of doing all things. I am the sovereign God in my own creation. I say, let there be light and there is light. I say, the mount, tell the mountain to move and the mountain to move. 
I tell the storm clouds to move and the storm cloud moves, okay? I declare every day that I wake up and before I go to sleep that I am that I am, that I am all powerful, that I am all worthy, that I am divine, that I am rich and not just in money, but that I am rich in confidence, that I am rich in my spirit, that I am rich in my intent, okay? That I'm pure in my intent, that I'm pure in how I give out my goal, how I share my gifts. I'm pure in the goals that I'm setting for myself, okay? We have to give ourselves divine thoughts in order for, for them to mean anything within our consciousness, okay? When we look at what divine ideas are, they are simply God-like of God nature. Divine ideals translates into the Christ man. The divine ideals of man. What is your Christ consciousness look like? Or are you still looking for the Christ in the clouds? Are you still looking for the Christ in the Albion man with blue eyes? Are you still looking for the Christ in your preachers and in your pastors? Are you still looking for them to connect with you to be the middleman? in order for you to get to the Father? Or, are you, or, or have you already understood that you are the Father? Have you realized it yet? Or are you still on your knees begging for Spirit to give you something that you already are? Jesus took himself down off the cross in order for us to get up off of our knees, meaning in order to give you your own consciousness, to make having and coming into the awareness of yourself and to the awareness of the world around you and how it's affecting you and how you are found in every aspect of consciousness from the trees to the birds to the ants to the mosquitoes you are in every aspect of consciousness as it flows around us as it flows through us okay we divinely set our universe up the way that we see it we put the roadblocks in place okay we put the obstacles in our path in order to ascend us, in order to um, continue to inspire us to strive at the spiritual understanding, to strive at the spiritual aspect of ourselves, to strive at the becoming greater than how we see ourselves in whatever situations that you find yourself in. Okay? We needed something to motivate us. And so we had to put obstacles in place because if we were comfortable, you wouldn't move. If you were comfortable in your tower moments, you would continue to give yourself excuses as to why you need to stay in that relationship. Why you need to continue to receive the treatment from your children that you're accepting. Why you're continuing to keep yourself at a job that you hate. Why you're willing to take a vaccine into your body in order to keep a job that you hate, in order to stay ingrained into an existence that is directly oppressing you, in order to stay connected to a system that is predicated on the genocide of not only you, but of every generation that comes after you. Continuing to give ourselves excuses to stay inside of a cycle, a cycle to stay um, rooted under patriarchy, to stay in the rib of your men instead of understanding that nothing comes into this universe but by a womb. So that means that God can only be a womb, not a rib from a man, but from the womb is anything birthed onto this planet and to the womb will everything return. And what we are in is the return of the mother, the maiden and the crone, the triple goddess, the original trinity taking its place. And as we come through her canal, as we come through this portal, through this final portal that we will never see again for the next 50 years, who are you birthing within yourself? Who are you allowing to birth? What are you allowing to die? around you? What are you staking your claims to? What worries are you releasing? What evil thoughts are you done conjuring? Because that's what evil is. It is a conjure, it's a conjuration of emotions 
And if we look at, and when we look at evil, evil doesn't even have a foundation to stand on. That means that it can't even exist unless you give it power to. So what are you giving power to? What are you allowing to be birthed through your portals? Okay? When we look at divine law, divine law is the logical process by which principles or God is made manifest. What principles are you living? What process are you putting in place in your mind? What process are you putting in and putting in place every day that you wake up? What principles are you living by? What laws of my eye are you revisiting? What scales of Libra are you allowing to bring balance to you? What principles are you living by? And what does that process look like? in your mind and when we look at the divine mind it translates into the god mind the ever-present the all-knowing mind the absolute the unlimited the omnipresent the all-wise the all-loving and the all-powerful spirit so that tells you that your mind can't be anything but all-knowing but all-powerful omnipresent when one and two touch and agree, I am in the midst. Who is the I that we're speaking about? The I that lives within you. The Christ that lives within you. The Christ that is resurrecting right now as we speak. As they're receiving their crowns, the same way the sun has received its crown. Have you taken up your crown? Have you picked up your own cross and walked with it? Have you taken up your own burdens? Have you taken on the work of your own mind? Have you taken on the process of rebaptizing yourself from everything that you think you know? From everything that you think you read in a book and every big word that you can conjure? Do you know yourself and what you are birthing in this season? Because if you don't know, there's someone waiting to give you something to birth. There is someone waiting to help you miscarry a dream. There is someone waiting to teach you the art of aborting that which you know to be true, to relinquishing your power, okay? There's but one mind and that mind cannot be separated or divided because the principle, it is the same principle of, ma of mathematics. It is indivisible. Okay? Divine ideas is spirit and action. The mind is not a thing. It is that which through orderly process produces things. What processes are you living by that is helping you produce your creation? There is a process that every womb goes through when she is birthing a child. There is a nine month process. Nine months of changing. Nine months of your body turning on you. Okay? And glorifying you. And teaching you the art of birthing. There is nine months that the physical womb goes through as she reaches full gestation. That is a process. That is a set of principles that every womb lives by. It's no different, be it a womb that's an animal form, be it a womb that's an insect form. The only thing that changes is time. The only thing that changes is time. The only thing that stays the same is time if you allow it to. If you consciously continue to make the decision to stay in your cycle, to not break generational cur curses, to not understand psychological and generational pathologies. Every time that you decide to wake up every single day and say that the world is going to accept me as I am because this is just how I am. This is just who I am. Those are excuses to not take on the accountability 
of your godhood. Every day that you wake up and go contrary to where spirit is naturally shifting you, to where this planet is naturally moving, anytime that we decide to consciously make the decision to go against nature, because for some reason, out of man's ego, he thinks that he can undo or override or rewrite nature. Nature is always going to be nature. Nature is always going to show up and to call the shots. Nature is always going to tell us when to move and how to move. Even when man tells you that the world is closed, the world is just opening. If you will but change your perspective, if you will but get into your own creation, if you will but connect back to your own wounds, if you will but take back your own power, if you will but go through this portal, if you will but just take on the confidence that spirit is instilling in us, if you will but just get into your bag and start talking your own shit, because that was the instructions for spirit for me. Own how powerful you are. Own every gift that you come with. Own every power, every upgrade, every download, every prophecy, Everything that you see and every way that spirit shows up for you. Own everything that you come with. Because it's through the ownership that the God can resurrect. It's through the dying to the ego that the God stands up and says, I know nothing and I am everything. I am Alpha and I am the Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. I am that I am. I die to myself a thousand times and I rebirth myself a hundred times more. Everything is moving and shifting because I am aware and in tune into my own universe. I am in my divine mind. I am actively in my Godhood. I understand that nothing, nothing that I need exists outside of me. Everything that you are searching for in your preachers, in your teachers, in your shamans, in your priests, in your root workers, in your healers, everything is going to first be found at home, within yourself, within yourself, okay? Let's look at the divine mind. First, it conceives the idea then it imagines its fulfillment. So that means that the thoughts of you have to be good. The thoughts of you have to see a vision. It has to think up, it has to see the light. I spoke into the world and said, let there be light. I spoke into the universe and, and I had a thought. I had an idea, I had a concept, I had a vision. I opened my mouth and I said, let there be light. That is thought. And then came images. So that means that you have to get past your mind first in order for your mind to manifest around you. Does that make sense? And so first it conceives the idea. Then it imagines its fulfillment. So you have to already see it done before you get to the finish line. You have to already know that it's worked out as you go through the obstacles. You have to already see that you've accomplished everything that you set forth to accomplish, even as you wade in the water, even as you feel blocked and stagnated and stunted, even as you feel hated on and talked about, even as you feel abandoned and left for dead, you must still see it as fulfilled. That's the whole reason why we're here. Because before spirits sent us to the physical, they saw it as done. They saw us accomplishing the mission. The mission. And the only thing that can stop us from getting to the mission is us. Is us. Because somewhere along the way in getting to the fulfillment, something says self-destruct. Something said abort mission and even abortion, aborted missions serve purpose. 
even miscarried visions serve a purpose. They are the building blocks. Even in your tower moments, they're serving a purpose. Even as everything around you falls apart, it's serving a purpose. It's teaching you how to mother yourself. It's teaching you how to lick your wounds, how to master your wounds, how to master failure. Okay, how to master loss. Okay, so first it conceives the idea, then it imagines its fulfillment. Okay, and this is man acting in cooperation with the divine mind. He places himself under the same creative law and thus brings his ideas into the physical manifestation. So the moment that you decide to stop being against the universe, stop acting like it doesn't exist, stop acting like it's demonic, stop acting like you gotta go through somebody else to get to it. The moment that you make the decision to get, to get into flow, to cooperate, to get in the game, to get into defense, okay? To get into sharing the plan, to get into rehearsing the mission. The minute that you decide to tap in, you, you automatically put yourself into divine creativity. And in that divine creativity, you automatically, you're gonna manifest everything that you most believe to be true. We done manifesting bullshit. We done manifesting money. And I'm gonna say it. Because spirit is dealing with the people and it's taking us away from profiting off of the gifts that should be changing and transmuting this planet. I'm going to say it. Spirit is in the position of being like Jesus. When he went into the temples and he flipped the tables. Because the people, the traitors, the spiritualists, the preachers, the ministers, the root workers, they were profiting off of the people and not ascending the people. Spirit is moving us away from profit and is moving us back into the state of understanding the people and not understanding the people in a way to profit off of the emotions of the people. Because the money, the conduct, the readings, okay, the spiritual tools that we're all out here creating, that's not going to make you no money, no. Your energetic exchange with the universe is what's going to determine whether you're going to be abundant as we walk and transition into this next season. What's your spirit looking like? What's your frequency looking like? What does your energetic exchange say to the universe? Is it like perfume? As it goes into the ethers, does it smell sweet? Is it woody? Does it smell earthy? Is it mildewing? Has it turned toxic? Is it pulling more from the universe as, as your frequency goes out? Are you stripping the universe with your frequency? Are you raping the universe with your frequency? This next season of, of abundance is going to be determined by your energetic exchange. So that means that your spirit got to be right. That means that the thoughts of you have to become divine. That means that the conduct and your actions have to go back to being pure. Because spirit is flipping the tables. No more will your profit off of spirit and say that that is how spirit is showing that you are worthy. Blasphemy. Your giftings was never tied to money. The work that was charged to your hands when you incarnated back onto this land was not predicated through money. And so spirit is flipping the tables. 
You're going to line up and fall in order or you're going to be wiped out all together. That's it. We are at the end. And it's really time for us to begin to understand that on every level that we could possibly understand that. Time is up. It's up. Your study is up. Your profit is up. Your playing small is up. Okay? Your toxicity is up. Governmental games are up. War games are up. Religious games are up. Time is up. Spirit is washing. Mother is washing this planet through water. And then she's going to purify it through fire. And anything that is not liking to her is done. Thus says the spirit. You're going to become like me eight people in the room, or you will be removed from me. That's it. You're either going to wash your thoughts anew, you're going to baptize your mind anew, you're going to fall away from everything that you think you know, or you're going to be washed away with it. Least you fall away. Okay? And then the last one that I want to cover is the divine motherhood, which is what we're all in. And the divine motherhood says, and it translates into the brooding, nourishment, nourishing element of the divine mind in which spiritual ideas are brought into fruition. So this next season is all about the spirit, how you operate in the spirit, how you interact with the spirit, how you receive the spirit. The rituals that you're putting into place in order to make room for the spirit. Not the spirit of Oshun. Not the spirit of Yemoja. Not the spirit of Papa Lekba or Papa Kandilo. Not the spirit of Anubis and of, or of Seklet. Not even the spirit of Ma'at or Isis. But the spirit of you. The spirit of you is what you are making room for. A couple nights ago, I um, not a couple nights ago, maybe like a few a few weeks ago, um, I had a dream, and in this dream, it's not a dream. I was operating in my during my awakened rest, and during my awakened rest, I walked with the deities. Every one of them that you can think of, I walked with them. And I, as I was walking with them, and right before I was about to come out of that state. Um, one of the deities looked at me and they said, it is not our job to be, to defend them. It is not our job to idolize them. It is not our job to become like them. It is not our job to recreate the works that they have created. It's not even our job to study them. It is our job to become our own deity. It is our job to become greater than them, not like them. And even Jesus told us in the Bible that greater works shall ye do than I have done because I am going before the Father. I am going before the Father. And what Jesus understood that in going before the Father, he understood that he was the Father. That he was what he was speaking to when he was on that cross dying. And when he was in the woods, in his mission. When he was on the land, going land to land. Metaf guys, we're, we're talking, we're not talking about physical things. These are allegory, stories. Okay? And what Jesus understood and became, he ascended himself. He ascended his own consciousness. He came back into his own divine mind. He learned the art of his own spiritual ideas and he learned how to weave those spiritual ideas and to manifest. And that is what we're charged to do. And then the last one I wanna look at uh, is divine order. Because this is important. Because it's important to principle and it's important to your process. To everything there is order. Even in chaos, 
chaos is order. Okay? Divine order is the first law of the universe. It would not, it would be, it would not, it would not be unless its various parts were kept in perfect order. So the, the universe wouldn't even exist if there weren't an orderly process that was happening. Okay? The divine order also translates into the facts of spirit. The facts of spirit are a spiritual character. And when spiritual character is understood and when it's put into its right relation, you are automatically in order. Your steps are automatically ordered. Like we sat in church for so many centuries, begging to something outside of us to order our steps. When all we had to do was to get into harmony and to alignment with the universe. To come back into the understanding and the understanding of ourselves. And so, what I want to share with you guys is a quick story. Around 17 or 18, I went through this experience of getting pregnant of somebody that I, at the time, was really, I loved him very much. Uh, and as many of you guys already know, I grew up in church, like heavily, not just for, um, not just for going to church on holidays or when something special was happening. I lived church, and that's why I can speak about church and why I'm in the position to critique, to critique church and church people uh, because that was my life. Um, there was nothing outside of church growing up. Um, it was in my blood, um, and it was it's absolutely very much in my family, and so I was very active in church. And so while I was in church, I got pregnant. Um, and went through this whole process um, of my own family, uh, my own godmother and her sister orchestrating on my behalf because I didn't have my own mind. I didn't know the power of my own mind. I didn't understand that I had a choice. You know, that's, that's the downside of sitting in church houses. Because one of the main things that it does is, is it programs you to not trust yourself, to not trust your own thoughts, to not trust your own understandings, you know. And so they orchestrated on behalf of me uh, to abort my baby. And so I talked through this whole, you know, thing today with my sister, Shasha. Um, and so I've already talked through this. And so I won't go into detail, but um, what going through that process taught me and not having any type of support system around me uh, to help me through that process, one, because I kept the information from my own family um, and I took that choice away from them of wanting to be involved when I was going through that process or that stage in my life. Um, and two, uh, the people that had a direct hand in orchestrating it, uh, when I went to them for counsel and to just talk it out, um, they told me to get over it. In fact, they told me that if anybody asked me about it, uh, to tell people that I lied because I wanted attention. Uh, and what that told, what it taught me uh, was that one, it was okay to abort the things that were birthing inside of me. It taught me the art um, of aborting when things get tough. It taught me the art of running away when things got hard. Um, and from that experience, there was a lot of ways in which I lived my life where I didn't follow through. And when I would abort before I even had a chance to put a process in place, in order to manifest the things that I saw for myself or wanted for myself. So that spirit of abort, of abortion, of aborting carried into other facets of my life. And it taught me lessons 
uh, that I didn't even know that I was holding on to so many years later. Um, but the beauty of it uh, and the healing in it is that I found my power of creation and of creating. And although I never physically brought my daughter uh, because I met my daughter, the one that I um, aborted, um, I met her during my week at rest. And she was beautiful. Um, and I know that she's with me and that she's around me. Uh, and through her help and through the healing of that process, it's my mission to follow through and to bring my ideas and my creations to full gestation. And it's your job to do the same. It's your job, even if you're caring, to ensure that you are implanting the right divine thoughts into your child as you're growing up to find moments to not be worried for what your life is going to look like once they get here, but to instill divine thoughts, divine love, divine goodness, understanding that God is going to take care of the rest because you are God. And God can't fuck up. God can't fuck up. Okay? God can't fuck up. The ritual that I had in place uh, for us to do for tonight is some mirror work. Um, a mirror, if you're going to do this mirror work, I am going to suggest that you black out your mirror, uh, removing your own reflection, removing the ego, and really just tuning into the darkness because it's out of the darkness in which we see ourselves. It's out of the darkness that growth and birthing really takes place. In the womb, there's darkness. There's not a lot of light, but it doesn't mean that the seed is not seeing what's happening or feeling what's happening. It's just in the space of darkness. When we look into the universe, it's blank, it's darkness, okay? And so to that is what spirit is calling us back into. And so I found this little Amazon mirror, uh, this mirror on Amazon, <laughs> and I blacked out both sides. Uh, and I'm going to be doing some mirror work with myself and really seeing and looking into what spirit most desires me to see. What messages they most desire me to hear and to take with me. What visions do they most desire to give me? What comes forth? What visions do you see? What is spirit telling you to release in the dark? And as you do this mirror work sitting in the tub, understand that the transmutation is happening in the water as you shift. The transmutation is happening all around you. And as once that water starts to drain as mine actually naturally is starting to do, understand that all of that shadow work that you're doing, all of that hurt, all of the miscarrying, all of the aborting, missions that you've gone and, and aborting and miscarrying experiences that you've taken on all of those things are being washed away and your womb is being healed so that what you birth after this makes and reaches its full gestation you won't miscarry in the process you won't abort in the process and even if those things take place understand that somewhere, intrinsically, you set the self-destruct motion in place. I called that experience into myself to ascend me higher. And after that experience, it really connected me to spirit in a way and gave me understanding of spirit in a way that I didn't have and didn't obtain growing up in the church. So therefore, I couldn't create a new experience because I only had information from the experience that I was already in. So spirit had to break it in order to shift my understanding, in order to shift how I moved forward in life. And it changed everything about me. It changed. I was never the same. I was never the same. And you will never be the same. If you take a moment to engage, especially as we are under this, this Lion Gates portal, uh, to really connect with the element of water, to really do some mirror work, and to see what visions 
and what spirit is calling you to let go of and what vision and what vision spirit is calling you to bring forward but before remember before you can see the image you must deal with the mind in order before you can see the image before you can see the vision you must change the thought you must instill divine thoughts thoughts of goodness thoughts of purity thoughts of love thoughts of greatness thoughts of abundance and not just in monetary form but that your spirit is abundant that your that the works that you put out are fruitful that your children live well that your generation is protected we must instill divine thoughts before we can see the image of who and what we're creating appear before us. We must deal with the mind. And so in this ritual, you're going to need a mirror, distilled water, our metaphysical dream wash, our indigo spirit wash, our vision aid, spiritual, spiritual spray, our consecration resin blend, um, goddess resin blend, um, and I showed you guys the extra things that I added. Uh, you can choose to do or not do. Uh, trust yourself. Uh, and as we bring to close this art of ritual, um, this week's art of ritual, to what are you birthing? I'm going to pull um, a card as instructed by Spirit from my doula deck. Uh, as we are all in the season of birthing. And spirit, um, as we go through this portal, as we move through this Lion Gates portal, spirit has us in uh, the position of being a baby whose head is just beginning to crown. As its mother's legs are open, spirit has us as the baby whose crown is just beginning to show. And spirit is saying to push the doctors around you, push. You got this push. Just hold on, push. Breathe. Breathe. Where can we also find that sort of breath of breathing and fire breathing? Some will call it Kundalini meditation. The rapid breaths, because it's helping you conjure the energy the frequency that you need in order for you to make that transition as your child makes the transition. Women come the closest to death on their birthday, when they're birthing and then birthing. They come the closest to death. And some women don't make the timeline, but their bloodline pushes through because the child survives. And what Spirit is saying is that for many of us, as we come through this portal, as we come through the womb and through the canal of our mother, many of us will not make it. Many of us will not make this next timeline. But for many of us, we are going to make and are making the timeline jump with our mother. So as the mother resurrects out of her death, out of her birthing, so shall you. So shall we do the same. Okay? And I just want to pull whatever card Spirit gives me. I ask that Spirit give us, gives us a message from our doula deck, from our doula temple deck. I ask that Spirit gives us a message. As we close this art of ritual spirit, how can we continue to operate in the birthing of us? How can we continue to produce our creations? How can we continue to explore our creation spirit? I'm by water, y'all, so I got to do this smart. <laughs> and so, one spirit is getting us. It's called the bubble of peace. And then we look at the front of the car. Okay, we see the womb, we see the mother really spending time focusing on her womb, really spending time centering herself within her womb, okay, sitting present with her womb. And the back of the car is, oh, guys, 
look at that. I swear that I thought that this was just two cards. And look, it's the Trinity. It's the Trinity. And so the first card is the bubble of peace. And it instructs us to sit in a comfortable position. Close your eyes. And remember a time when you were really at peace. Where were you? Who were you with? What were you doing? Reprogramming the mind. See yourself there and then describe in three words, three, describe in three words how being there makes you feel. Visualize a circle with these three words in it. Now you can scan with the three words that, you, that, that explain your experience. Now scan your life today and notice who, what, and where supports these three words. What do you need to move out of your bubble? And what can you bring into your bubble to have more of this energy? And this is all we were talking about. What are you making room for? What are you releasing? What are you holding on to? What are you nurturing? So pick three words that describe the birthing stage that you find yourself in. And the affirmation that this gives us is today I set an intention that I will surround myself with blank to have more peace. What is one thing that you will do to surround yourself with more peace? That is the meditation. The next one is an affirmation card. And it says, your unique journey. No two births are the same, just as no two people are the same. What works for you may not work for someone else. Your authenticity is your inner strength and your true power. And what did I say earlier? Spirit is calling us to stand in our own power, stand in our gifts, to talk your shit, be in your Leo energy. Okay, y'all, that's why I got my Leo hair. I'm in my energy. I'm feeling myself. I feel beautiful. I feel sexy. I feel powerful. I feel enlightened. I feel divine. I'm in my goddess energy. I feel so connected to spirit and to source and to nature more than I've ever been before. I feel confident in my mission. I feel confident in my voice. I feel confident in everything that I'm birthing from here. Okay? So you and your mission is not going to be like anybody else's mission. The things that you're birthing is not going to be like the things that other people are birthing. Your birthing journey is not going to be like the next person's birthing journey. Your authenticity is where your strength and your power lies. This card is telling us to take a moment before your next contraction, before your next pain, before your next tower before the next thorn in your side. Take a moment before the next pain, before the next contraction, to tune into what you really need. As we're in this contraction, because the earth is in its own birthing pain, as we move through this pain right now, through this painful death, as we move through this painful transition, what are you taking the time to discover your need? What do you need in this moment? What do you need in your spirit? What do you need for your mind? What do you need for your heart space? What do you need in order for you to communicate better and more clearer? And more vulnerable. Okay? During your next contraction, during your next pain, do what feels right for you. And say this affirmation out loud when doing so or in your head, giving yourself this divine thought. I surrender. I surrender to my own power. I surrender to my own power. I surrender to my own giftings. I surrender to my own lessons, to my own journey. I surrender to my own power into my own unique journey, y'all. The next time you find yourself in a painful moment, in a painful experience, 
What do I need in this moment? What do I most need in this experience? And then surrender to your own power. Surrender to the fact that you know that whatever it is, you want to figure it out. Because you are all divine. You are omnipresent. You are the strength of the lion. You carry the confidence of the lion to get the job done. So I surrender to my own power and to my own unique journey. And then the, the hidden card, the trinity, the ending card is calling for movement. A birth ball is what this card is saying. The birth ball is a great prop to use during labor as it aligns and opens up your pelvis and helps you to use gravity to get your baby to descend lower. This is also a great distraction technique during labor. So get something, incorporate some type of exercise into your daily routine that's gonna help you to get moving. That's going to help you waken and shift that spine, to shift that kundalini energy, to open up your pelvis, do some pelvis, some yoga work to open up that area to prepare you to birth the things that are coming to you in thought into the physical, okay? Then this, this card instructs us to sit on your birth ball using your hips. Either spell out the letters of your baby's name or roll out an affirmation that you most need to hear at that moment. Here's one for you. Such as I can do this, I am doing this. Such as I have the ability to achieve the things that I most desire, I am achieving them. Such as I can do this, I am doing this. And to repeat this affirmation as you roll your hips, as you get into your space, as you shift your energy, as you raise your kundalini coil, your kundalini energy, as you, as the fire within you awakens. Repeat that affirmation. And then it says, and if you don't have a birth ball, you can do this exercise standing up. So stand up in your power. Stand up in your confidence. Stand up in your vision. Stand up in your knowing. And bring into the physical manifestation the things that you most desire to have the world that you most desire to see. As the world around you shifts and fall away, it falls away. Be courageous enough to birth a new experience, your divine experience. And until next time, everybody, I hope that you guys have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful night. And I hope that you really discover what stage of birthing you find yourself in this season. And I hope that something that was said tonight helps you in your journey. And if you know someone who can use this live, I encourage you guys to tell a friend, to tell a friend. Tell me your thoughts and all that good stuff as well. Hold on, y'all. I got shit. I've been sitting in the same position, but I want to read some of y'all comments before I get off really fast. Because like, y'all was talking. Okay, hold on, y'all. Libra says this is right on time. Life Verb says, yes, Ruth speaks. So I'm, we were speaking. Bree says, I am that I am. Life Verb says that if you need someone to help you and this ladies, please contact me. Yes, guys, y'all know that that's our favorite love uh, life coach. Y'all need to contact us. And she's a phenomenal life uh, coach that can really help you get some direction in your life. She says, it's time to let go of what no longer serves us. Uh, we have to be willing to be a creator because we do create our own reality indeed, indeed. Uh, Simone, my baby mother, okay, says that she really needed to hear this. Um, Zen says that you have to envision it. Manifestation is birthed from you envisioning, envisioning it uh, and then script it as though it is present. It is in the present. I say, um, I say, I say, I say. Uh, the uh, T Brown Boogie Down I love that name She says wow I was just talking about this tonight With a friend Well I say spirit is always going to get validation uh, T Boogie Down Brown says That the spirit of you Yes 
Uh, Zen says, thank you for the transparency. I say, I thank y'all for sharing this space with me. Zen says, we create our own reality. We create, when we create our own reality, we create new experiences. Let's give birth to our life purpose. She says, push and utilize breath work uh, through the process. Uh, the Yoni Day Spy, hey twin. Uh, she says, yes, this is so beautiful. And so I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to thank you guys for joining me on this week's episode of Art of Ritual to What Are You Birthing? And I encourage you guys and invite you guys to take part in this ritual, to take part in this mirror work and the shadow work. And then to go into the waters and to, and to allow the waters to transmute and to do away with everything that, that is no longer serving you in order for you to pick up and to birth your new form that's coming into place. And so I encourage you guys to meet me here next Sunday for the next episode uh, within our series, our Art of Ritual series titled The Divine Mind. We're going to delve even deeper uh, into what it means to carry and to embody the divine mind in order for that mind to work on behalf of us. And so I will see you guys next Sunday. Join us here at the sanctuary again on Tuesday. Uh, we have a killer coming, y'all, and she has a phenomenal, phenomenal show uh, that's prepared for this week's episode of Tuesday's Tea. And so I thank you guys for sharing this space with me. I thank you guys uh, for sharing your time and your energy with me. Uh, and I thank you to each and every person who will watch the playback. And I truly hope that you guys have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful new moon and the up. Peace, everybody. <laughs>